All right, guys, I built a new workbench. Uh, super excited about this thing. Can't wait to get a project built on it. Uh, my old workbench was good. I uh, built a lot of things on that in the past year. Just uh, was ready for an upgrade, and there's a couple of things on that bench that I uh, really don't like. So, uh, hence the reason for the new uh, workbench. So, uh, with that said, uh, before the video starts, I just wanted to cover a couple of things. Uh, one of them being cost. Uh, how much did this thing cost me to build? That way, uh, if any of you guys are interested in building it, uh, you'll know exactly what the cost will be up front. Um, so, I wrote down some numbers here for the MDF and the lumber. Uh, it was 300 bucks for the laminate top. It was $85 uh, for the vise. Uh, it was $100 and the hardwood that I used to trim out the edges. Uh, I had that on hand, so I just added 15 bucks for that, basically. Uh, that'll change depending on what hardwood you use. Um, so total cost in materials was $500 total for everything you see here was $500. Now, um, I separated the cost here for the cost for these items, the glue, uh, this portable drill press, uh, this two pack of clamps and these eight dogs that I bought on Amazon and this drill bit uh, to uh, drill the dog holes out. Uh, the total for all of that, um, total for all of that was $155. Total uh, so all in cost was uh, $655. So not too bad, honestly. And if you have some of these items, obviously you can subtract that from the grand total and uh, 650 bucks. You know, it's, you're getting a lot of workbench here for that amount of money, in my opinion. Um, so uh, I had my old workbench. Uh, it was good. It's a good bench. I built a lot of things on it. Uh, just a couple of things I didn't really like about it. And uh, I'll, kind of, I'll touch base on those things later in the video. Uh, so if you're interested in that, seeing the, the reasons what, what I didn't like about that bench, uh, that'll be later in the video. Okay, the so end. one thing you're going to see in the video is uh, I put the entire frame together. I used loose tenon joinery to do it and everything came out true square. Everything was great. Um, and then I put the top on it and I didn't like it. So you're going to see in the video, I actually hacked the whole thing up and redo it. Uh, the reason, reason what I didn't like about it was I made a last minute design change and I'm going to put some cabinets underneath here eventually. And what I was, what I was thinking I would want to do was just make everything flush, uh, flush all the way on the sides and then all the way on this face as well. And my thought process behind that was, um, when you're dragging cords around or your tape measures on your hip or something, uh, it's not going to be getting hooked on things. And Honestly, I know it really doesn't matter um, as far as aesthetics go. A functionality, it totally would have been fine, but uh, I just didn't like the way it looked. <laughs> so, and this is just a hobby of mine, so I didn't care. So I just had the time, so I just decided let's hack it up and redo it and make sure it's exactly the way I wanted it. So, uh, so that's what I did. You'll see in the video, I just take the sawzall and I hack it all up and then I recut everything to the size that I wanted and uh, put it back together. Um, that said, I was too lazy to go back and use and do the uh, loose tenon joinery. So I decided to actually do pocket holes instead. Uh, and I did use, I used this glue right here uh, paired with the screws. Uh, this is Loctite PL Max Premium Glue. Uh, this stuff is awesome. I love this. It's, it's amazing how well this stuff holds. Um, if you got anything that you want joined, any wood that you don't want to use conventional wood glue with, uh, that construction adhesive, I highly recommend it. So um, with that said, I don't do any talking in the video here. I just kind of let the, the tools and uh, the machines and stuff be the star of the show and my workflow and all that stuff. Um, but so anyway, um, I'm going to let the video play out. I uh, hope you enjoy.
Can I talk to them? Maybe like this. Can I talk to them? Can you what? Can I talk to them? Talk to what? That whistle. Oh, the microphone? Yeah. <laughs> can I talk? You sure you can talk? Grab it. How do you do it? You just talk into it. That's it. Okay, go paint those now. What ones? What ones, Dad? The ones over there. I don't remember. Hmm? <laughs> those two. <laughs> Are you being silly? <laughs> okay, watch out. Right here, we gotta get these in, okay? What ones? You ready to paint them? You want to sit on this side over here? No, I want to break this. Okay. Just break this off, Daddy. Just break this off. Sure. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> Let me see that. Nope. That's kind of a lot. Okay, Dad. <laughs> Thanks. There you go. Here, grab it like this. Right here. Okay. No, nope, like this. <gasps> grab it like this. There you go. You did it. <laughs> My hands are clean. Okay, get this one done. Do we start? <laughs> Go ahead. One, two, three. Ready? One, two, three.
Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, but real quick, uh, I just wanted to go over some features on the, my old bench, uh, things that I didn't like about it. So uh, real quick, without rambling too much, uh, one of the main things I didn't like about it was when you're sanding a workpiece, 
uh, you're sanding away, sanding away, and your cord will get caught in these grooves every now and then and just yank your sander. Uh, it can be very frustrating. What already uh, is an annoying task, sanding, we all don't like to sand, right? Um, can, it just kind of adds to the annoyance of it. So um, there's some things that could be uh, mitigated or that there's things that you could do to mitigate that. Uh, but anyway, that's more of a design flaw on my end of it. One of the main things I would do, and which this would also solve the next issue that I have with this, is I wouldn't put as many grooves in the top. You don't, I like, I have these every four inches. You know, it's not needed. You just put one around the perimeter and just go every foot or something like that, um, and it would be fine. So, uh, but anyway, next thing, less grooves would also mitigate this issue. Uh, so when you're doing a glue up, it can be stressful, right? Uh, uh, it depending on the size of the glue up. If it's just a cutting board or something, it's not a big deal. But um, if you're gluing up a tabletop or something larger, this your clamps, they do slide over the top of these grooves and everything pretty decent. But as soon as you pick up on it, it just grabs right away. Um, and just it just can be kind of annoying. What's like I said, what's already a somewhat stressful environment when you're doing a glue up, uh, it just kind of adds to it. So those run us were a couple of deal breakers. Um, okay, so to recap, uh, what I really wanted in a workbench, what I wanted out of this workbench was one, the size uh, and the weight, the mass of it. Uh, also, I wanted dog holes and uh, I also wanted a vise. Uh, that was something I never had on any of my other workbenches. I was always always clamping uh, on the edge of the uh, edge of the uh, table itself, which I still wanted to have the ability to do that. And that was also the reason for um, when I hacked up the entire frame. Uh, that was one of the main reasons I thought about. It. So what I, what I originally or what I had originally was this design, and then I made a last minute change where I was going to decide to make everything just flush all the way around because eventually I'm putting cabinets underneath here and stuff, and I wanted to have the whole face flush completely. And my thought process on that was. Uh, your tape measure and cords and stuff uh, wouldn't be getting hooked on things. So, but when I put it together, uh, one, I didn't like it. I know, I know aesthetics don't really matter too much uh, as far as the functionality goes, right? But uh, um, I'm out in my shop a lot. I wanted it to look good and I just didn't like it. And when I was sitting up here, I was like, I'm not going to like that. I, so, and this is just a hobby of mine. So I didn't care. That's why I hacked it all up and redid it. So, um, so, but now I still, I have the ability to take just a quick clamp and clamp a board down to the edge of the table too. So, um, but I wanted a vise, and this vise, it's not expensive. Uh, it was hundred bucks on Amazon. It's that Yoast uh, nine inch vise, and it's got that quick release on it. I wanted that. Um, I wanted to make sure it was easy to use, and I think that quick release action kind of helps that. Uh, I wanted to be able to take a board and use this little pop-up dog, which I'll probably eventually drill some holes in here where I can actually place a dog, but for now, this is good enough. And you can clamp that down like this and that's not going anywhere. I mean, that thing, if I needed to just sand that face or, you know, do some face work or um, uh, work on the face of a piece, a table leg or something like that, uh, and it's not moving. I mean, half of woodworking is trying to figure out how to keep your workpiece stationary while you're using your tools on it. And uh, this is definitely uh, pretty solid. So um, that said, and then the other part is if you have, say it is table legs and you have four of them, just a quick little turn of that and you place another one in and turn again and you're back to working right away. So uh, very easy to use, quick and easy. Uh, it's something I never had and I just wanted to be able to have the functionality of that. So, um, so yeah, anyway, uh, I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you like what I'm doing here, give me a like, subscribe, and I hope you enjoy. See ya.